Hi. This time we're going to start to explore brushes in Photoshop, but the thing is, brushes changed with CS5. At the time of this filming, a lot of people haven't upgraded to CS5 yet, and I know a lot of people who are still working with versions as early as Photoshop 7. So I'm going to start by showing you how the brushes work in CS4, which is pretty much how they worked in earlier versions as well. But I will mention when things won't work for you if you're using CS5 so you won't get frustrated. So as I'm sure you all know, this is the brush. It's what you use for painting, clone stamp, erasing, smudging, and all kinds of other things. All the stuff that we're going to learn in the next few lessons will work for anything that uses the brush at all. I'm going to be showing you stuff with a paint tool. You can get it by tapping B for brush on your keyboard, or you can get it right over here. So the first thing you need to be aware of is what the cursor does when you're working with it. Right now, mine is set to show the brush dab where it's the strongest, so let's look at cursors first. Because I'm on a Mac, I'm going to go to Photoshop, Preferences, Cursors. If you're on a PC, you will be going to Edit Preferences Cursors. Either way, that will open up this little dialog box. Over here we have a thumbnail that shows us what the cursor is going to look like, a list of cursors, and then a place where we can change the color for the brush preview. We'll be seeing that color in a little bit, but for right now we're just going to concentrate on the cursors. So the first one is the standard cursor, which is just a little icon of a brush. I find that completely useless. I never ever use it. The next one is Precise, which I also never use, because if I need a crosshair, I can get one and still see where the brush is, and because I find that really hard to see on my screen. The next one is Normal Brush Tip, which is the one that I was using. This will show you where the dab is at least 50%. So if you're using a soft brush like this one, anything that's faded out of the edges will not be shown. You'll only see it where it's nice and strong. I use that one a lot. This is the Full Size Brush Tip, which shows you where any paint or whatever it is you're doing is going to be applied at all. So even where it's only 1%, you're going to see it. This is also very useful sometimes when you need to know where every single little bit is going. If I want to see the crosshair, you just click here where it says show crosshair in brush tip and the crosshair shows up. So it's just that easy. For right now, I don't need the crosshair and I'm going to go back to the normal brush tip and click OK. And um, now we can start to paint. Now I'm using the mouse, so that's like painting with a bar of soap. and. Um, I'm not going to be doing much painting, mostly I'm going to be showing you tools, so, but that's that. You can get a different brush tip by going up here to the little thumbnail that's in the options and clicking on that and choosing whatever brush you want from the list that's here. Or you can right click and that very same menu will show up right underneath your cursor wherever you happen to be, so you don't have to mouse up to the corner, which can be really handy if you're in the middle of doing something. Or you can go over here to the brushes panel and open that up. Now, I have my brushes panel easily available. If you don't, you can get it by going to Window Brushes, or you can tap the F5 key, and that will open your brushes panel. So for right now, I'm going to close this and right-click, and we'll just use this one to see a few more things. You can change the diameter of your brush by using the sliders up here at the top, and you can change the hardness by using the slider down here at the bottom. You will not get a preview when you're using the sliders in this particular window, so it helps if you have a lot of experience, but that's that. Let's change this back to 100%. You also have a little menu here under this little triangle, which will let you change the way that you see the brushes displayed, so that you can change it to a list, for instance, if you'd rather see the names, and all kinds of other things. These are the same all over Photoshop, so we've already gone through this once in some detail, and we're not going to be doing it again. But, but this is where you can load brushes, reset them, save them, replace them, delete them, rename them, or add new presets. Or if you have a brush that you know you're going to want to use again, you can also get a new preset by just clicking this little new icon, and that will open up this little dialog that will let you name the preset, and when you click OK, it will show up in the list. Um, we don't want to do that right now, so I'm going to click Cancel, and I'm going to go back to showing things as small thumbnails, because that's the way I prefer to work. In addition, you can change many of these things with keyboard shortcuts. So, for instance, if I want to change the brush size, I can do so by using the bracket keys. The left square bracket key will make it smaller, and the right square bracket key will make the brush larger. If you look over here, you'll be able to see the pixel size for the brush as I'm doing this. See, I can make it smaller, and I can make it larger. If I add the shift key to the square bracket keys, I can change the hardness of the brush. And keep your eye on the little icon up there at the top, and you can see that I can make it softer or harder. Softer uses the left square bracket key, and harder uses the right square bracket key. If you have a more recent version of Photoshop, you can also change these things interactively. With the Macintosh, you'll hold down the Control and Option keys, and then you can drag right and left to make the brush smaller or larger. If you're on a PC, you'll be doing that by using Alt and the right mouse button. 
to make it smaller or larger. And if you're on a Mac and you add the Command key so that you're holding Control, Option, Command, you can make it softer or harder by dragging left to make it softer and right to make it harder. If you're on a PC, you can do that by adding the Shift key. So you'll be using Shift, Alt, right mouse button and dragging left to make it softer and Shift, Alt, right mouse button and dragging right to make it harder. By the way, that's one of the things that has changed in CS5. If you're using CS5, you cannot change the hardness with that particular keyboard shortcut. You do still have one and we'll get to it in a little while, but until then, you can't. And you can also do all of these things from the brush panel. If you click the brush tip shape right here, you will open up this pane that lets you once again change the diameter and change the hardness, just like we've been doing. But you can also change some things that you can't change other places, like the spacing. If you drag right, you can increase the spacing so that you can see the individual brush dabs. And if you drag left, you can decrease the spacing so it looks like it's a solid line. You can also change the angle and the roundness. Now to change the roundness, you can just click on one of these little circles and pull toward the center or push away from the center to change the roundness of the dab interactively. Or you can drag on the word roundness to change it, or you can just type whatever roundness you want into the field here. To change the angle, you can grab hold of the arrow tip and move it around interactively, or change the angle by dragging on the words, or you can just type whatever angle you want in here. So we can change it to 45 degrees. So we can have a nice little calligraphic brush that lets us do calligraphy if we feel like it just that easily. I'm going to change to different brush tips so I can show you a couple more things. So we're going to use this dune grass brush. And I'm going to increase the spacing a little bit so that it's easier to see. So when you're using this kind of brush, if you change the size, you will find that you can enable this button that says use sample size. And because this is a captured brush, that will return you to the size that the image was when you captured it. So that's really handy to have. You can also flip X, which flips the brush on the horizontal axis. So you look down here, you can see it changing. So you can flip it on the X axis, or you can flip it on the Y, which is the vertical axis, or of course you can flip it on both if you want to do that. And that will let you make brush strokes with a captured brush at a different angle than the angle you had when you captured it. Now remember all of these because we can also change them dynamically as you're using the brush using these controls here. But we're out of time, so that's going to have to be another lesson. And I'm probably only going to be able to show you shape dynamics because these are so rich and so full of stuff that it's probably going to take one session for each thing. So until then, this has been Robin Wood, and I hope you found this helpful.